Thanks for watching another episode of West Coast Cast. My name is Kevin, and today I'm going to be fishing for some trout in uh, the Yakima River, and hopefully we can get them to rise to some dries, maybe some stonefly patterns, and uh, definitely some nymphs. We've got a couple hours to throw it at them, and so we'll see what we can get. If you like this content, please click the little like button and subscribe, and let's get to it. All right, here we go. If that was bottom or a fork. I think that might have been bottom. Fish on. Woohoo! Oh, I lost it. That was pretty. So when I cast upstream, I immediately corrected for tension on my rod so that I could see that cider stop and hook the fish. So when you cast upstream, you wanna raise your rod and adjust the slack immediately. There's a the one. Ah. So when you cast upstream, you want to not leave your tip of your rod like you would when you're casting with a dry fly. What you wanna do is cast upstream, move your rod tip into position where you'll be fishing it, and then lead that fly downstream, keeping tension with the, with the fly. You do not want slack in your line. If you end up with slack, you're gonna miss the hook sets and the fish. So on that one, it was like the first 12 inches of the drift I had that fish on. So what you do, is you um, you cast upstream, and if I just leave it there, that's gonna be slack. So cast upstream, as it hits the thing, I move my rod to where it's gonna be fishing. I gently, ah, oh, there's another one. <laughs> I'm trying to show this and not catch fish at the same time. So I want, when I cast upstream, I'm gonna gently with my hand strip line really gently so my cider doesn't bounce up and down if it bounces up and down it's going to look like uh, it's not going to look like a bug for the fish it's not going to look natural so i cast upstream immediately move my rod to the position i'll be fishing it in and i will lead my flies downstream without bouncing my cider and and then that way i can maintain tension contact with the flies and hopefully get more hook sets that way. So hopefully this helps some of the beginners out there with Euro nymphing. Whoop. <laughs> All right. Let's try that again. Fish on. All right. Nice one. I knew I kept on getting a bite there. Oh, this is a white fish, I think. It's a big white fish. I want to work the fish up river from me. Up river and then I can bring it back down to me and net it. There we go. Wow, it's a big white fish. Hooks out already. Uh, this thing's pretty decent sized. Wow. All right. I would rather get that trout back though than so this whitefish. 
Here's how the white fish is. I put the white fish back in the water and he parked himself about two feet away from me. <laughs> so far, both of the fish that I had on um, bit on the olive paradigm. All right, cast upstream, adjust my rod tip to the appropriate height I want to fish, keep my line tight by gently pulling in the slack and leading my fly downstream. Ah. Fish on. Remember when you set your hook, set it downstream. So set your hook, set it downstream. I think this one's gonna be a trout this time. Maybe a smaller one. Ah, it's another white fish. Upper fly. Another white fish. Fish on. This time it's a trout. So that's 10, 15 feet. Well, 10 feet from shore, maybe. Little guy, though. That's okay, though. Oh. Ah, where'd he go? Here we go. Come on in. There we go. All right. Nice. Nice little pretty rainbow trout. Here, let me wipe my hand. Wet my hand, I mean. That took, I have two flies on, and it took the bottom all of Paragon. It's a nice little guy, here we go. Put him in, in the water, there he goes. So I'm really off nice and easy. So before I waited out there, I mean, I'm fishing really close to where the camera is. So the reason why I mention that is so many times people walk right out on top of the fish. I don't even have all my fly line out of the tip of the guide. That's how close I was fishing. And the key is to keep a really tight line as soon as it hits. There's another one. Wow. Huh. Actually, that might have been a snag. I think that was a snag. And I've got a caddis casing on my hook, so you've got to take those off, otherwise you aren't fishing. Um, I caught so many fish this summer on this Spanish bullet. I'll put, a um, I'll put a picture on the video of what this is. So I figured I'd try it today, see how it goes. I'm always tempted just to fish with two olive paradigons because it always works. fish I've caught so far, I have not felt the bite hit. I've only seen my cider stop or pause. All right, fish on. Oh, it's a white fish again. There we go. There we go. Hooks out. And here's, here's what it looks like. And there he goes. Hey, well, that wraps up another episode of West Coast Cast. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I had a great time today. Caught several fish. A couple white fish, a couple trout, but more importantly, if I've inspired you at all in any of my videos to give your own nymphing a try, hopefully some of the tips today will help. A lot of newbies out there when they start your own nymphing have a hard time 
catching and hooking into fish because usually you're allowing too much slack in the line. So hopefully the tips I gave on how to keep tension and contact with your flies will lead to more fish for you and a lot more fun. So until the next time, have an awesome day, awesome rest of your week. And if you liked this video, be sure to click the little like button and subscribe. Thanks everybody. Cheers.